this is Kylie from Hello Crafter. Now, if you were unlucky enough to witness my Facebook Live this morning, I do apologise. It's fair to say that things didn't quite go to plan. So instead, I've recorded this little video showing you how it should have been done. This is the card. I showed you it on my Facebook page earlier. And we're actually using the Breathtaking Bouquet stamps stamp. It's a large stamp. It's a background stamp. So I'll just show that to you. I've mounted it on one of the acrylic blocks. It's the largest block. It's, it's size F because it's such a big stamp. If you don't have the large blocks, you can use one of the stamp positioning tools such as the Stamparatus. That works really well. But if you don't have either of those, then you just need, you need something solid to, to mount the stamp onto so that you get a, um, an even pressure when you're stamping. You can even use the back of one of your stamp cases. That would work. Just make sure that you apply pressure to all over the stamp to get a really clean image. So the other things that we'll be using, some inks. I've got Melon Mambo, Granny Apple Green and Mango Melody, but you can use any colours. We're applying the colours with uh, the sponge daubers. And then we're heat embossing the stamped image. So for heat embossing, you need a clear sticky ink, such as, as Versamark. We're using clear embossing powder. This is how the powders come when you get them. But I like to tip mine into a Tupperware box. I find it um, easier to use like this in classes, just a bit less messy. And then we've got the heat tool. This is just a standard craft heat tool. And I think that's it. Oh, glue, obviously, and cardstock. So I've cleared my workspace and I've cut myself a piece of Whisper White cardstock. This is 9.5 centimetres by 13.8 centimetres. Uh, if I bring my embossing buddy over and tap it down, it releases a, like a fine white powder that I can just wipe all over my card. This cleans off any sticky residue any grease or any static because we don't want the embossing powder to stick to anything except the stamped image. So we've got our Versamark, we ink up our stamp really well, trying not to rock the table too much. You get plenty of ink on your stamp. So instead of taking my stamp to my card, I'm going to put the card on top of the stamp. Just carefully lay it down and try not to move it once it's down so it doesn't smudge the image. And then you're just using my finger to press down quite firmly just to make sure that the whole of the stamped image makes contact with the card, especially in the centre. And just don't forget around the edges. And then carefully lift off. And because the stamped image reaches right to the edges of the card, just be careful where you're where you're holding it. So I don't know if you can you can see that. I'll try and tilt it up to see if it catches the light for you, but I'm not sure if you're picking that up. Okay, so embossing powder and I'm just tipping. A load of the powder on, I'll do one half at a time. Turn it around. Making sure that as much of the powder goes back in the box as I can. Just tapping gently on the reverse just removes any loose powder. And again, I don't know how much you can see of that. So we're bringing our heat tool now and start to heat up the powder. And what you're looking for is uh, the change from a powder to a um, shiny, melted outline. Okay, I think that's done. So 
So again, this is really difficult to show you um, because it's clear embossing powder on white card. Uh, it's going to be tricky for you to see, but once I start adding colour, you'll be able to see the image emerging. Right, so we've got our inks ready. I'm just going to start adding some colour with the sponge daubers. How, how I do this, I, I take a little bit of ink on my sponge and if I show you on this paper, I start off with hardly any pressure, so I'm barely touching the paper with my sponge and I make circular movements with the sponge to get a really soft blended colour. If I start off really light and then add more pressure, then it's a softer blend than if I go in really heavy to start with, then it's quite hard to then blend out the sort of the marks from your, your dauber. So I'm just going to start adding the green on the sort of leafy parts of the design. Um, and then I'll go in with the other colours to colour the flowers, but I'll probably speed this bit up for you. some colour all over I can go back in and just fill in any gaps and also blend the colours in together a little bit so I'll go back in with my lighter colour the mango melody and just blend in with that melon mambo and then I get a nice soft transition between the two colours and fill in any gaps or a little light. So what I just need to do now is just go over this with a little bit of kitchen roll. Can you tell that I'm rationing half kitchen roll? Desperate times, right. Just go over it with a little bit of tissue or kitchen roll and or a clean sponge and what that does is just lifts off any excess ink from the embossed outline and makes the whole thing stand out a little bit a bit better there okay so just move those out of the way you can leave this hole so you can mount this onto a card base and just add a simple sentiment and that'll look really nice. But I'm gonna cut this down. So get my trimmer and I'm just gonna cut strips lengthways at four centimeters. So I can get two out of this for two cards, which is quite economical. And all I'm gonna do is mount this onto a card, but I want to get some extra detail on here. What I've done is created some score lines, which produce like a, a, an embossed um, frame around this strip. So I'll show you how I've done that. So back to my trimmer, or you can use a scoreboard and take your mat piece, which is actually the same size as we started with. So nine and a half by 13.8. And I'm going to score this and I'm using um, inches because that's that's what I did. So I'm scoring this at one and a quarter inches. Make sure my cutting blade is out of the way and I bring in my scoring blade. Scoring that at one and a quarter and one and three eighths. So it's two score lines really close together. I'm moving it along and I'm scoring it at three and one eighth and three and a quarter. 
inches. So these are the measurements. If you wanted it in centimetres, I've used three centimetres, 3.4, 7.8 and 8.2. If you turn it over then, the score lines that you've made are raised and this creates your quite simple but elegant embossed outline. So we just need to stamp a little greeting on here and I've used one out of the itty bitty greetings. There's a really useful stamp set to have in your stash because it's got lots of sentiments on for many different occasions. So I'm just using the green ink. I'm adding, hey friend. So I want some cards to send out to some friends. Um, with us all being stuck inside, I thought something cheery through the post might be appreciated okay so yeah all I, all I need to do is, is glue this down and glue this down and so here's the finished card and i really hope you enjoyed watching me make this one before i go i'll just show you another card that i've made using the same stamp the breathtaking bouquet stamp this time I've heat embossed on to crumb cake with white embossing powder. So it gives you quite a nice lacy effect, which I thought was quite nice. So there's another way of using it. I'm gonna be making more projects with this stamp set over the coming few days, and I'll try and share those with you on the Facebook page. And uh, hopefully will inspire you to do something similar yourself. If you do make one of these or something like this with the supplies that you've got, um, then please do post photos, I love to see your makes. Um, and if you need any help with getting, getting some supplies, so if I can help you with ordering some of these for you, then just message me either on the Facebook page or email me info at hellocrafter.co.uk. I'd be happy to help you place an order for supplies. So thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.